Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about um, You Decide Renfrewshire. And initially this project, um, we started planning this early 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020. We had originally anticipated that this actually would be a all singing, all dancing, face to face event because of the amount of monies involved. Um, but because of COVID and all the COVID restrictions that came with it, we then had to be a wee bit more creative about what we did. And um, sorry, I was just caught off with that message coming in there. Um, so, so actually, we didn't intend it to be a digital process, but it became a digital process just through necessity. And actually, came it became a much longer process as well due to some of the restrictions and COVID uh, with COVID and the team still wanting to, to, to make sure that some of that face to face stuff happened. So I'll just talk you through what we did. So the context for the project is it was a mainstream PB project and um, we had £1.2 million from the Roads um, Capital Investment Programme and that was to be over a three year period. However, when it came time to actually allocating the funds, we, we allocated the whole 1.2 million in the one year. We were hoping to do it year on year, but it ended up we did it all in the one year. Um, we wanted to make sure that communities were given a key role in the decision making process. And we wanted to one of the key sort of aims um, that the environment department were they were wanting to get a better understanding of what sort of the priorities were for the community. All things that um, PB is set up to do and, and improve. So in terms of the scope for the fund, we wanted to make sure that we encouraged innovation and creativity. We wanted we wanted sort of different ideas from the general sort of pothole and road stuff that we generally got from um, these types of, of funding and, and engagement processes. In terms of the cost, we were looking for projects that cost between £5,000 and £50,000, but they had to have limited um, ongoing maintenance. In terms of the planning, we needed to check to make sure that any of the ideas that were coming in weren't already in the pipeline with um, other departments within the councils. And one of the key ones was the sort of housing and regen teams. So we, we had to sort of link in with them quite a lot just because obviously there's a, a massive housing regen programme going on with uh, Renfrewshire at the moment. So they were one of the sort of key other services that we worked with just to make sure that some of the ideas, we weren't going to be putting ideas in and then that they were, they were going to be removed because a, a block of flats were going to be getting knocked down or something so we had to sort of consider all of that quite carefully and things around parks and stuff we needed to also check that when we, the, the with the project design that if there was going to be additional work required we needed to make sure that that wasn't going to be too much and, and too much cost otherwise it wasn't going to really be feasible for the project or the ongoing maintenance idea and in terms of location and um, we needed to make sure that it was on council land because of all the permission processes around trying to do something that wasn't on council land so these this criteria was really set out um to the um this criteria was um <laughs> sorry i keep getting thrown when stuff coming in um this um criteria was put out um for communities to have a look at and um, make sure that they sort of try to fit their ideas within this in terms of planning um, we formed a steering group. We made a steering group. Um, the core group was made up of um, a budget holding service. We had comms and marketing um, because obviously we needed a highly visible, visible uh, marketing campaign. Um, we also had CLD because they were going to support the community engagement. And just um, like Daniel was saying earlier, we needed to think about some of the challenges for some of the, the, the groups across communities that were going to be able to participate and how we were going to make that participation a bit easier for them. Um, Partnership and Equalities was myself um, and sort of taking that lead role around the PB. Um, we had project management, just making sure that we met our milestones and we were kept on track. And we had data analytics because we used, um, for our digital aspect to this, we used Survey123 um, and the data analyti analytics team were able to support us through setting up that, that um, 
platform and letting us know sort of the way that it could work and all the different things that we could use it for, but also the number crunching and particularly around when it came to the voting um, data analytics were able to do all those searches through to make sure that too many people weren't actually um, abusing their, their, their ability to vote because we were using postcodes. So there was somebody um, from the data analytics team whose job was purely to make sure and keep an eye on those votes when they were coming in and making sure that there, there was no um, massive abuse of um, how people were voting. One of the things that Daniel talked about was having community reps on his um, steering group. We didn't have that in Renfrewshire and that there was a specific reason for this and it was simply because it was the very first mainstream PB that the council had ever done. There was a the, the the environment department had never done anything like this before. There was a real nervousness, and I don't know if anybody here is from any sort of environment departments, but I think one of the things that they were feeling was that environment departments are one of the departments that get a massive amount of complaints and they get a massive amount of people just sort of not agreeing with what they're doing. So so this this there was a real nervousness myself and the lead officer from environment department we really tried to push it with our senior staff but they were just like not this time round we'll see how this goes and we'll involve communities in the steering group um the next time round so we kind of thought well we, we, it's better to go with it than not so we looked for an alternative and so we worked with um, members of the local partnerships who are local people who allocate funding across um, the seven local partnership areas um in Renfrewshire and we also worked with community councils and and we involved them at every stage of the process and when we had drafted plans we went out and we spoke to them about the plans and what we were doing and we took on board some of the things that they fed back to us um, and and we we changed that um regarding whatever sort of feedback we were getting and it was a sort of two-way conversation around that we then sort of did a bit of benchmarking with the steering the steering group did a bit of benchmark and we contacted Sterling, Dundee and Falkirk because they had all had big big projects going on at the time. Um, and then what we did was, because this was a completely new area of thing for the environment department and environment department staff work in a very specific way and they do very specific things. Um, and to sort of moot this idea with them had been quite challenging. So we ran some training for them and we got sort of on the ground workers from, I think it was Dundee, it might have been Stirling, but I can't remember. Um, but we got on the ground workers from the environment departments from their services to come in and talk about the PB processes that they undertook and they were very much like we didn't like this to start with either we didn't like the idea of it but actually it worked very well and that really helped to get our environment staff on board um, and get them really engaged in the process which actually worked it worked really well we also held a number of um, training and information sessions for elected members again trying to get them on board getting them to buy into this process and um, because uh, I mean I think as much as we've got the 1% target, I think we, will anybody working in a local authority will have experienced the fact that um, not all elected members buy into PB and support PB. So there, there was a real effort made to get elected members on board. One of the things that we did have which was invaluable was a PB project champion. This project champion um, came in the guise of the convener for the Environment and Infrastructure Service. Um, who um, constantly looked at our plans or worked with us around plans, gave us feedback on how other elected members were going to take that, how they were going to feel about that, helped us to write things in a way that we're actually going to be able to sell stuff to elected members. And then they would go to the, the, the boards um, and have chats with other elected members and sell this process to them and really get them on board. And actually through the process of having to go to board meetings and, and do presentations to elected members, that was really valuable in terms of the, the pushback that we got. It was really, really helpful. And if you could have a project champion, it's one of the key things throughout this process that I would definitely recommend. In terms of our community engagement, we wanted to engage with people in their own communities. We wanted to go where they were um, and we wanted to um, actually we wanted to attract new people and new ideas we didn't want to get the 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 familiar faces well, of course we wanted them included but we wanted new ideas and we wanted new people to engage in this 
We wanted to have a more of a conversation and not a consultation. Hence, at the, the outset of the, the, the process, we were really hoping to do a lot more face to face stuff than um, that maybe. I mean, I think we still did quite a lot, but we were hoping to do more. Um, and that was about the dialogue part and trying to encourage people in groups to talk to each other. We wanted to be more fl flexible and be able to respond to people a lot more quickly. Um, in terms of some of the things that they were, they were maybe asking us. Um, and, and again, that was one of the reasons we wanted to have direct contact with people on a face-to-face -face basis. We didn't want to leave any community out, so we went to every single um, town and village across Renfrewshire at one point in the process, and we wanted to promote creativity and innovation. So that was some of the key aims of our community engagement. What we actually did was we had a very highly visible marketing campaign, which actually was was huge and it did cost a lot of money. But what I will say is because it was the first mainstream PB programme that we had undertaken, that um, getting that branding and everything in place, it did cost quite a bit of money. But now that um, that's done, you decide Renfrewshire is now, it's now something that people are very familiar with. So the next service that I'm now working with are, um, they will use that, that, that branding and so people now know what it is. So the first um, service to do this took the hit on that that expense, but now um, the, the communities are, are aware of that brand and what it is and what it means to them. We had a dedicated page on the council website with links and surveys um, where people could submit their ideas. And that was again using survey one, two, three. We also had um, a dedicated email address where all residents could ask questions of the team. And if they didn't want to go into survey one, two, three, they could just email their ideas over to us if they felt that that was easier. We also had a range of postcards um, developed where people could write their ideas. And we had these um, post we had post boxes where people could post them and we had these in community sites including supermarkets libraries leisure centers we had some of them in community groups and organizations buildings where where people were going to be um and we attended um a series of road shows and these road shows obviously it was covid at a time and we had all the restrictions so what we did was we had massive gazebos all branded with the you decide logos and this created a bit of a, a sort of buzz and people were curious about what it was all about and encouraged people to come over and talk to us obviously the whole social distancing thing had to do had to be there but even though this was all sort of face to face in the community stuff what we did have was a bunch of ipads and so we were still sort of a bit like what Gavin was saying earlier, we were still using digital technology to get people's ideas, but we were still had that presence in the community where they could see us and they could talk to us. But And we were able to just put their stuff into the, the iPad as they spoke to us about the different ideas that they had. Um, in terms of just sort of trying to engage with folk, we, we delayed some of this process we delayed some of this process just to allow us to actually have more face-to-face -face stuff rather than just trying to rely on on digital and um, so we went to some of the big hitting events that the council had like sort of a food and drink festival sort of the halloween festival something that we knew where we were going to get thousands of footfall um, and and so we had gazebos um, strategically placed in places that um, at those events that would encourage people to come and talk to us again some of that some of the social distancing stuff was all in place at that time. When we could, we also attended um, over 40 community groups and org organisations and we took our iPads with us. Um, and that was about trying to get to some of these groups. So it was women's groups, it was elderly people's groups, and um, we went to sheltered housings. And, and some of the the deliberation stuff took place there. Some of these groups would just put in an idea as a group because we would go in and we would have a conversation with them about it. They would all sort of get into conversation about what idea they think that they should put in. And then as a group, they chose one or two ideas that they wanted to submit um, based on what that conversation was. Um, and we did we did a similar thing with schools. We went into schools and some of the schools just submitted one or two ideas as a whole school. Um, uh, we didn't necessarily have young people submitting indiv and ideas individually, but we, we had a few, but not many. But but schools more, more got involved in creating a conversation with their young people and then submitting um, one or two ideas as a school. One of the, the, the big things around um, 
the whole in, in uh, digital engagement stuff was was we we created a video. We we worked with a local organisation who created a video. The video um, had local people from all the local areas that we were we were going out and talk to, and there was a real reason for doing that. What we we thought was that if we use real people, then people who knew them would see them online, and then the video would get more shares, and that's exactly how it worked, and that's what really helped us get get the word out there. And I I just wanted to show you it's a really nice video, and I think it really captures the mood of what we were trying to do. Um, in Renfrewshire, so it's only a couple of minutes long, so I thought I would um, just play it for you guys and let you see it. You Decide is a brand new fund that will give communities the opportunity to decide how £1.2 million is spent in your local area. We're looking for infrastructure ideas that will make your community a better place to live, such as cycle routes, improved access to parks, or road safety improvements, and much, much more. £5,000? £50,000? As long as you live in Renfrewshire, we want to hear from you. So think big! If you've got an idea for your community, the fund is open for all. This is a chance to change where you live for the better. It'd be great to get like some funding to like redo some of the skate park. It would be great to repair the bowls so the skaters can use it as well as the bikers. One of the things I think would be good is lighting for our play park where we have a tennis court and a basketball area and it would allow young people, children and families to go down, enjoy the park, into the twilight and enjoy our beautiful environment in Loch Winnach. This fund could be fantastic for Renfrewshire. We of all people know how important it is to have access to good funding that can help you make your dreams a reality for the community round about you. Some of the ideas you could put forward and maybe keeping your kids safe in the park and maybe some exercise equipment. And it's up to us to decide where it goes. We need to think about ideas, road safety, civic spaces, new cycle routes. So how do you apply? <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. So how do you reply? So how do you apply? Yeah. Is that the right way? Question mark, would I do that? You submit your idea and we create the shortlist. Subject to feasibility. The shortlisted projects go to a public vote and then we take care of the rest. So visit the website at www.renfrewshire.gov.uk forward slash you decide. For more info or look out for our postcards in various locations across Renfrewshire. Remember to tell us as much as you can about your idea. The more detail, the better. And submit your idea online or post it back to us. And if we think your idea is possible, then it's over to the public vote. What would you like in your community? What would you like for your community? So if you have a great idea, you decide. Okay, so that kind of gives you a bit of an idea. What we actually got, we expected about 500 ideas or so. What we actually got was just shy of 3,000. We did not expect that. We did not plan for that. So that was a bit of a shock. Um, and in terms of manpower, it took us a lot longer than we appreciated that it was going to, to work through the amount of ideas that we actually got. What we were able to whittle those ideas down to was, um, I think, 160 ideas, 116 ideas in all, um, in terms of how many we're going to go back out to the public vote. 120 of those ideas had the, did not meet the criteria of the fund, but what we were able to do was farm them out to other services across the council. And we know that um, up until now, um, every, every single one of those ideas has been picked up and looked at. All the other ideas that didn't go um, forward, um, and it, this was a, a really mind-numbing, slow process, but it was something that we were keen from the outset that we wanted to do, was we fed back to every single person that submitted an idea, and we told them why their idea wasn't feasible. And in a re recent focus group, um, I, I somebody had brought that up and they said that they thought that this was just something that the council was already going to decide for them. But the fact that we had contacted them and explained to them why their idea wasn't put forward, they then knew that it was a real process and that their ideas had been really considered. So that was really important and it was something that we were keen to do from the outset. Um, yeah, so we had... So using postcodes, um, we 
we got people to submit their ideas. So we got um, 1,982 postcodes, just under 3,000 ideas were collected, shortlisted 119 across 16 towns and villages. And as you can see, the range there. Um, and we we shared all that with council services. Sorry, I was throwing me the bit here because that was one of the pages that was listed uh, missing in my paper, my paper slides here, sorry. So then it came to the voting um, and the results. We did a very, in terms of the voting, we, we carried out a very similar process as we did to the ideas stage. Um, and we got um, 4,800 votes then were received. Um, there was no major issue around people sort of cheating on that because all any of the ones that we, we had that we thought were a bit sketchy, they were already removed before we sort of could, uh, had that counting. So that was that was um, already done. We we had set a, a minimum um, number of votes for viability at 2%, and I think we reached 2% in all 16 towns and villages. But in some of those places, we got we got something uh, we got as much as 5% in some areas, which was really good. We had an announcement event um, where we had 50 successful projects, um, and we are currently on. Um, in the process of delivering those projects. And we are constantly going back and forward to the communities and the people with the ideas for those in terms of how those projects are being delivered. Um, which is which is all working wonderfully. And there's a there's a quote from the announcement event that um, I kind of think sums up how people felt about it. So one resident who'd put forward an idea for a play park to be more accessible, he said, I turned to my wife when her idea was successful and she had a tear in her eye, it's perfect. And he went on to say, you look at how many people attended this event and they all represent a community project that you decide has helped, which is amazing. There are people walking out of this building tonight with a massive smile on their face. And that is something that the environment department never hear. So there was just a real, a real pleasure for that team in that department in terms of that, that feedback. So in terms of community feedback, we we went for just in terms of the projects. So I know we're really running out of time. We went for quick wins. So the things that we could do and turn around really quickly. So Paths, cycle paths were some of the quickest things that we could get up and running. Um, and that's just some of the feedback that we got from some of the people who were um, accessing um, those things. And all the things of like play parks and everything else are all out of tender to moment, at the moment. And all the, the sort of pricing and planning are, are in place for that. Just quickly, in terms of the highlights, Partnership working across um, council departments was the best that it had ever been and working with the community and third sector was, was huge and they were kind of really key to this process. Branding, comms and marketing were absolutely pivotal to this process because they helped us get the message out there. Um, and we residents were really keen to get involved and promote the process. In terms of the community engagement, 59% um, um, of people accessed all of this information on social media, but we had 35% of people who accessed it through the roadshows and through community groups, which really told us that the face-to-face -face aspect to any digital process is still really important. In terms of residents' feeding back about the process itself, we got we, this is what we set out to do. 65, over 65% of people had said that they had never engaged in a council consultation before, and 82% of them agreed that it was a good way to allocate council budgets, and the majority of them found the process easy to participate in. Um, and we have a list of residents who are keen to get involved uh, to be part of those steering groups for future PB processes that the council is going to undertake. Key learning is time, resource and commitment. Um, really don't underestimate it and make a real plan. Don't try and rush it. Take elected members on the journey because it will make your life a whole lot easier if you're in a council um, and never underestimate the amount of ideas you'll get. Just keep a realistic timeline.